If you like underdogs and football, then I hope you enjoy the story of one of the most interesting young quarterbacks in the league, Intuiti. Take the Johnson who offers a block and going deep and he's looking for Waddle! He got him! Tua was born in Iwa Beach, Hawaii as the oldest of four and as you could probably guess grew up loving football. His parents even noticed that he would sleep with the football under his arm as a little kid and that passion showed up on the field as he dominated at Pop Warner. As only an 8 year old, Tua was able to toss the rock 30 yards while many of his colleagues could barely throw it 10. But although he grew up a football fan, his main inspiration was his grandfather Sue. Sue was highly respected by the local community and was even addressed as the chief. So as you could probably tell, Sue was a great dude and believed in Tua from the beginning, even to the point where he requested that Tua would talk about how well he played after each and every game. But sadly, early on in high school, Sue passed away and it hit Tua so hard that he considered quitting football until his father instilled in him that he should honor him by continuing the play. Although it was a rough time in his life, Tua was able to lock in and play lights out as a sophomore. Over 2,500 yards and 33 touchdowns were ridiculous, but honestly, what I think is more impressive was his only three picks. The fact that his father would use the belt whenever he threw an interception likely was a big reason behind all of that, and although a bit harsh, it pushed Tua to get better and better each and every year. The following season, Tua may have thrown seven picks, but his near 3,000 yards and 24 touchdowns made up for that, as he was chosen for the Elite 11 camp and eventually won the MVP. As the top prospect out of Hawaii and one of the top quarterback recruits in the country, it only made sense that Tua was a 4 star, and eventually my man was elevated to a 5 star once Bama took notice. Schools like Arizona State, Colorado, and Hawaii were interested initially, but once Bama was in the mix, it was over. After growing up being mentored by former Heisman winner in Mariota, Tua went into Tuscaloosa with much more experience than many of his colleagues. Even though he went in as the backup to Jalen, Tua T was able to still get some in-game action with over 600 yards and 11 touchdowns. Although not a crazy stat line, Tua showed up when it mattered with the game-winning touchdown pass to Devontae Smith in the natty. So with that in mind, going into the following season, it was not much of a surprise that Tua was able to start from the get-go. And as you could guess, my man was on absolute demon timing. Nearly 4,000 yards and 43 touchdowns is pretty impressive for someone in only their first actual season. But like I said before, Tua was a veteran when he walked on campus, and it showed on the football field. Although he didn't win a Heisman after such a season, winning a Walter Camp and Maxwell made up for that, as Tua was widely seen as arguably the best quarterback in college football. In fact, he had an FBS record 199.4 passer rating that year, as it seemed like the sky was the limit for his potential. Although a tough act to follow as a junior, Tua was doing just that with a ridiculous over 2,800 yards and 33 touchdowns through 9 games, along with what was looking to be a record-breaking 206 passer rating fueling a dominant Bama team. He's down, and Tua's down. Well, the fun times didn't last all that long as Tua ended his year midway through the season, and so he had to watch the rest from the sidelines. Although a sour note to end the year on, it seems like Tua figured it was a sign that he should take his talent to the next level as he declared for the NFL draft. My man probably would have been the top prospect in the whole thing if the injury didn't happen, but nonetheless, Tua was still seen as one of the top dogs out of college. So with that in mind, it was not much of a surprise that he went high off the board to Miami. The Miami Dolphins select Tua Tungavalawa. Although he signed a $30 million deal with the Dolphins, just like at Bama, Tua went into the season as a backup to this time Fitzmagic. And if you fast forward a bit, Tua wasn't able to get any action until week 6 against the Jets where he threw a whopping 2 passes for 9 yards. Pretty insane start for even Tua, but only the beginning of his time under the spotlight. After the game, while the team was on bye, Tua T was named the starter going into the following week against the Rams. And although it was a bit of an up and down performance for my man, considering that his first pass was a strip sack. Tua was able to eventually throw a touchdown pass and help the team win. As you could guess, over the next few weeks, Tua was a bit off and on, even though he was somehow able to lead Miami to a 6-3 record in that time. It was a bit too little too late though, as Miami still barely missed the playoffs, even though they went a pretty good 10-6. In the 10 games that Tua ended up playing in, my man was able to pass for over 1,800 yards and 11 touchdowns on with 5 picks, which is not a great statistical season, but impressive enough for someone who is new to the whole NFL thing. So with that in mind, just like at Bama, it seemed like Tua had quite a bit of potential moving forward, and so there was a lot of questions around his second year of play. In the season opener against New England, Tua didn't do all that much with only around 100 yards and a touchdown, but the team was still able to beat Big Mac and the Patriots to start off the year on a good note. But the hoopla didn't last all that long, as he had a rib injury the next game against Buffalo and pretty much missed the next month due to it. 
Once he came back from the injury, Tua was able to finish off the rest of the year, and although he put together a decent season, Miami still missed the playoffs once again, after this time going 9-8. and Following a bit of an up and down first two years in the league due to injuries and coming up short back to back seasons, it seems like Tua is motivated to establish himself as an elite talent once again. And thankfully for him, it seems like the Dolphins are trying to do the same thing. After hiring former San Francisco OC Mike McDaniels and changing the culture in South Beach, Miami has made some big moves to make the Dolphins a contender. Not only did they just pick up one of the best linemen in the league in Taron Armstead, but they also signed arguably the fastest and most talented wideout in Tyree Kill. Along with that, they were able to add guys like Raheem Mostert and Sonny Michel to round out what is looking like one of the best offenses in a loaded AFC. Now Tua has a bunch of weapons to work with, from Waddle to Tyreek, Jaseki, and the other backs I just mentioned, so there really shouldn't be any reason for him to not be on timing. And although there are quite a bit of doubters, it's all noise if your teammates are on your side. And all things considered, it seems like Tua and Tyreek are going to wreck some havoc. Tua talked about how he's gotten stronger and more mobile throughout the offseason. And if what he's saying is true, then Tua is going to have his best year since his sophomore season in Tuscaloosa. It's looking like Tua's confidence is at an all-time high, simply by how he's talked about his passes to Tyreek. And let's just say, when Tua is confident, he's very dangerous. So from what it seems, Miami is quickly becoming one of the most interesting teams in football. Do you guys think Tua is going to bounce back this season, or is he just overrated? Let me know your thoughts. Tua T has been through a rough few years to say the least. So I think it's only right that he goes off with the cheetah on his side. Thanks for watching the video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to subscribe, like, and comment down below stuff you want next. But anyway, see you all soon, and peace out.